This is a complicated phone. It's a great phone, but it's a complicated phone. It's the Note 20 Ultra. It goes big on everything. It goes big on its name. It goes big on its screen. It goes big on the camera. And it also goes big on the camera bump. But it also gets some big butts. <clears throat> okay. hmm. Believe me, I like this phone. I like this phone a lot. But it's something similar with Samsung all the time. It's great. It's amazing. But it's some things, it fails. So, without any further delay, you were thinking I'd say something away, right? <laughs> okay, so, without any further delays, let me tell you why. Built with the best quality materials. Stainless steel, matte finish, frosted glass on the back, which does not get any fingerprints. The screen spreads across all the corners of the front, murdering the bezels, and has a small punch hole camera near the top. It easily goes unnoticed while using the phone. The boxier straight edges of the phone dig into your hand while you hold the phone. And coupled with the fact that how big this phone is, it gets extremely hard to hold. And on top of that, the screen and the back curve into a very minimal stainless steel side, giving you nothing to hold onto. All you really are left with is using the huge camera bump to support the phone and keep it stable in your hands. Hence, the design is amazingly beautiful. It's well crafted, it's well made. But what it fails on is practicality. As when you have such a big phone, it should be easier to hold it. But sadly, it's not. The display is amazing and immersive is an understatement. Colors are amazing. The resolution is Quad HD. The blacks are deep. The saturation is so good and it goes so deep into all corners. Bezels hardly exist. The touch response latency is the lowest it possibly can be. The display can always remain on to show essentials and the refresh rate is 120Hz. But the 120Hz is only available when you're using the phone at 1080p resolution. And if you want to use the phone at Quad HD, you'll have to use it at 60 hertz. It, it also gets plenty bright, but it's not enough for the outside sun. So there is no real disadvantage in the display apart from the limit of the resolution when it's 120 hertz. Because a lot of other phones enable you to just use the phone at 120 hertz and have a quad HD resolution along with that. For example, the OnePlus 8 Pro. But apart from that, if you're okay with that, this is a very safe bet. Coming to the camera, the camera is the best thing about this phone. Makes that fat camera bump worth it. There are three lenses with the specs listed out. Starting with the main lens, it's huge. It's 108 megapixels. Clicks pictures with the greatest level of detail, saturation, colors, and dynamic range. The sensor size being so big results in a natural bokeh when subjects are closer to the lens. The ultra-wide lens clicks surprisingly sharp photos with good levels of detail and very less noise in average lighting despite the much lower resolution than the main lens. The periscope lens is also amazing. The camera switches to this lens whenever you zoom to 5x, giving great shots with good colors and great detail. You can also get crazy 50x zoom shots too, but that doesn't mean that the shots click at 50x are gonna look amazing. They're gonna look pretty bad most of the time, but what this actually means is combining the lens with image processing, the shots clicked with 10x or 20x zoom are gonna look great, given the conditions are decently lit. All the lenses are also backed by great night mode for low light conditions, and the processing it does is magic. It makes the noisy shots look way better and way sharper. Do not zoom in though. The camera also has a pro mode, which gives more independent settings for the people who understand the camera as well and a live focus mode for portrait shots. When it comes to videos, this camera also does 4K 60fps. They look pretty good, I would say. Video sample is right here. This camera can also go up to 8K at 24 frames per second. For better description of the video taking capabilities of this camera, I'll be linking down my friend Michael's video. Go watch that video if you want, if you want to use this phone for recording more videos or reco recording cinematic footage if you will. So the Note 20 camera is great, but nothing. This camera is perfect. I like it a lot and it's the best thing about this phone. Before we get into the performance, let me clear a few things about this phone. Basically, every Samsung flagship comes in two versions. 
One is sold in US, which has a Snapdragon processor inside it, like the Note 20 Ultra sold in US, has a Snapdragon 865 Plus. And there is another version, which is the global unit, which is sold with the processors made by Samsung called the Exynos processors. Like the one I have, which is a global unit, this has the Exynos 990 inside it. When you compare the performance between the Exynos version and the Snapdragon version, there is a difference. The Snapdragon version performs better and is more power efficient. That's not to say that this does not perform well. It only means that the Snapdragon one performs better than the Exynos one, which is a bummer because any person buying a phone which is this expensive should expect the best available performance, while they don't get it. I know they're not comparing it with the Snapdragon version, but you know that there is a better version that exists. So keep that in mind while buying this phone. As for the actual performance of the global unit, it's good, it's really good. It performs well throughout intense tasks. I haven't faced any hiccups so far and the phone remains smooth through and through, barring a few stutters here and there. The software UI is Samsung's One UI, which remains smooth in its navigation. Yes, there is a button. But Samsung has crammed so many features into this phone, both useful and useless, that this phone becomes an opposite of a minimalist dream smartphone. There are too many controls in the control center in the notification panel and navigating through menus of the settings is pretty complicated. For any first time user, it's gonna take some time to actually adjust to this phone. Suggestions at the bottom of the screen help and Samsung also likes to make their own version of every Google app. So when you buy this phone and start using it, you'll find that there is an extra app for every basic Android function. So in case simplicity is something you like, skip over this phone. But if you're okay in taking your time to adjust the settings of this phone, making it a bit simpler for you, then I guess you can go with it. Or if you're familiar with Samsung and you have been using Samsung phones before, you're gonna be okay with this. The battery on this phone is pretty standard. It lasts you an entire day. It charges really fast through the super fast charger you get with the phone in the box. It did not start off really well for me, but it got better with time. So the battery seems to be okay. But the thing that bothers me is that the Snapdragon unit of the Note 20 Ultra gets better battery life because of the more power efficient processor. That's the only thing I don't like about this, that even though I'm paying the big bucks for this phone, I don't get the better battery life. But still, if you just want a phone which is expensive and lasts throughout the day easily and charges really fast, Note 20 is a very safe choice. And Samsung DeX is very cool. Use your phone like a computer with a monitor wirelessly if you have a Samsung TV or with wires and with a keyboard and a mouse, which you can attach through Bluetooth with it. And the phone can also wirelessly charge accessories and other phones as well. The Notes app is good. There is an effective sync in place, which helps you sync all the notes you make on the Samsung Notes app with the OneNote app from Microsoft. There are also features like recording written notes synced with timestamps of the audio recording, highlighted according to the timestamps of the audio when you play it back. The Pen Up app is great for making doodles, notes, sketches. You can storyboard or create thumbnail concepts. It definitely won't be replacing a notebook or Procreate on iPad, but it can be a short-term replacement. The S Pen can control a few things on the phone. It can be used to make notes on screenshots of the whole or a part of the screen. You can scribble notes on videos or photos. You can also make doodles on the viewfinder of the front camera. And most importantly, you can make notes as soon as you take the S Pen out of the phone, regardless of whether the phone is in use or not. The fingerprint scanner is mostly fast, except a few times where I face some errors or some possible delays in unlocking the phone. The speakers on this phone are hands down one of the best speakers I've heard on a phone. The earpiece is loud and clear. So the question is, should you buy this phone? Yes, but not right now. Because I think that when you're spending this much amount of money on a phone, you should be getting the absolute best of everything a phone has to offer. This phone gets good, gets great, gets amazing, but then in some things, it fails. So my recommendation would be wait for the price to drop on this phone and then maybe get it because right now at this price, I don't think it's worth it yet. So this is the simplest way I could explain this phone to you. If you're still confused, I don't know what to say. I'm disappointed. Kidding. And I hope you're able to show this video to everyone else you know who's confused about this phone. And you know what happens when you do that. You help them, you help me, and you get gratitude and good wishes from everyone you know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it. I'll talk to you in the next one.